With me is Richard Edelman. Every year at this time, we talk about the trust barometer across government, business, economics. And we know from what Klaus was saying that trust is in, in very short supply. But let's go through. The Edelman trust barometer shows that most people don't trust their leaders to manage innovations like AI effectively. Nearly 60% of the people in more than two dozen countries say their government regulators don't have the competence to do it. And innovations are mismanaged than well managed. And yet if you go up to the top of the, uh, the promenade, AI, uh, Richard Edelman, there's an, uh, there's an orgy of AI, as I'm <laughs> calling it up there. There is just AI everywhere. Every shop, every corner, uh, the future is AI. Innovation is the great promise for business. The problem is people don't believe it's being well managed by two to one across all the countries we study, across age groups, across gender, across income groups. It's a universal concern, which is we don't think that regulators are keeping up. We don't think that people are taking sufficient concern about um, employment impacts. So they want to be sure that this is going to be in their favor um, before but they they're just- right. they're right. They're right. You had the IMF report this morning, yep. but up there, Everybody's talking about reliance, robustness, we learned, we can do better. It's, a, it, 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 it's like it's a disconnect. We are about to make the same mistake that we made with the internet and with the digitization. The opportunity for business is clear. It's the most trusted institution in the world. It needs to do this right. It needs to accept good government regulation. It needs to be sure about retraining, and it needs to be sure that people understand what we're talking about. We've got to not repeat the mistake of the pandemic when we lost trust in science and basically went back to you know trusting people next to us. We've got to have a system that works for everybody. But they're right to have this cynicism about it because business, they're not just looking at it to cut costs. It's not as, it's just brutal as that. It, it, but there will be a white collar loss of jobs or impact that we have not seen before. This is correct. But we should acknowledge that there's going to necessarily be a change. We should improve our community colleges. We should be sure that we're putting a campaign together to educate people about this is going to be a measured transition. This is not going to be done suddenly in a jerk. Um, we're going to come to a place where, for example, we can prescribe medicines that we know are going to solve people's problems. If in the past, we know that government has always been way down the list in terms of trust. Is there any indication that government, the position of government is improving? What we see is there's high trust in government in the developing markets where the economies have performed well. There's low trust in the developed markets. Government versus business is a 50 points delta on competence. What does it, that mean? It just means that people think business gets things done, that government talks and is stymied. And that's why so much reliance on business, on diversity and inclusion, sustainability, geopolitics, and now it's going to be on innovation. U.S. elections. Tonight, the Iowa caucus. Christine Lagarde says that Donald Trump is a threat to the values of Europe because of the difference in values. Um, obviously, some of your employees will vote one way and others will vote the other. But how do you see tonight? Innovation is on the ballot, Richard. It's an interesting, what do you mean? it means that we have 50 elections around the world. The U.S. is one example where people are trying to make an assessment of how much government I want, what kind of regulation I want, what kind of future I want. Do I want a more national focus or do I want a global focus? But if Donald Trump becomes the nominee and then subsequently succeeds, um, there is a very polarizing effect. How does, how does the global e economy, if you like, manage that? Or am I just being too far into the future? Look, brand America has been hurt over the last 10 years. You look at Southeast Asia, for example, China's trust is higher than in the United States. That is a major shift in the period of time. But the U.S. has a lot of strengths. The U.S. is ahead in technology right. in terms of oil and gas. You know, we have a fantastic energy portfolio, so we have a real opportunity. Choose your color, sir. Oh, I pick Edelman Blue. <sighs> Edelman Blue. I've had that as being every corporate blue. Edelman Blue. blue. Matches your shirt. Absolutely. All right, join me over here. 
Um, are we ready for AI? Are we, as a society, are we dangerously unprepared or have we nailed it? And then circle which of these you like or go on a frolic of your own. Well, I think we're underprepared and I think inequality is the key issue. Inequality. Yes, because the perception of AI, for example, by the person in the low quartile is totally different than the person in the upper quartile. And the perception that too much of the innovations in the last decade have been benefiting the rich. So we've got to make sure that the average Joe um, makes sure that he gets what he needs. Thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate okay, it. Okay, my Thank friend. You.